Hey everybody, OCD Mikey, Hi-Fi Guy. What's going on? Uh, I'm back to get with you on Anatomy of a DAC number two. Basically what we're going to look at right now is a $1,000 DAC. Okay, this DAC is made in USA. It's made by Dangerous Music. This is my choice for $1,000 DACs. Um... Personally, I do not go Chinese when I need a thousand dollar DAC or I want a thousand dollar DAC. Um, you can still buy one made in USA that sounds better because we innovate DACs, they copy our DACs. So buy from the innovators, buy American. Anyways, uh, so this is a dangerous music piece, and I'm just going to quickly go over the difference so we can sort of see. The difference is so you can sort of get a little bit of a grip on what the difference in cost uh, is for and all that kind of jazz. So the first thing that you'll see on this architecture is it, it the materials are much thinner, right? Um, we're using a sheet of aluminum here that is just, you know, a machine bends this and folds it and, and, and puts all these little lips and everything like that. Just It might just happen in one process, like a one press that hits it and then it, 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 it all this stuff folds up. Um, essentially, you have a front panel and then everything else is this, this bottom and this back are one piece. So what happens is when you assemble it, all these are soldered on. All these buttons and everything are soldered onto the board. You slide this board forward into this back section. You just slide it in, put the screws in, and put the front panel on, and it's assembled. That's all it takes, okay? So assembly is a huge part in cost difference because this can be mechanically assembled. It's probably it's probably done by hand because it's easy enough, but it, it, it could be done by machine. Um, we're using like a 1.5 millimeter, uh, or, or actually a 0.005 thousandth, so five thousandths of, of an inch thick aluminum uh, sheet, which is just like a piece of paper that lays down, that folds up, that gets this. We got a quarter inch um, front panel. As you can see over here on the Rockna, you know, our front panel is five eighths, our, uh, you know, over half an inch. This is three eighths on the sides. And the, and the rear and the top are very thick also. I didn't even measure this, but this is about the same. The lid on the Rockna is about the same as the front panel on, on the uh, Dangerous Music. Um, this one also has a volume control here on, on the Dangerous Music. So you can see right off the cuff, you can tell there's no AC power in here. Okay, So there are drawbacks to that, and then there are benefits to this. The first benefit is there's no AC power anywhere near this, the, you know, delicate circuitry, digital circuitry right here. Uh, AC power is what emits EMI in a great way. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's a giant electromagnet. So you, you get a emission of magnetism that can mess with signal and, and change the way things behave inside. So you really would like to get your, you'd like to shield your AC portion or you'd like to just get it away. So in this example, there is no AC. You've got DC inlets right here, which means you use an outboard power supply with that does the rectification, everything. You send the DC up into here and then it does voltage regulation right here, very, um, you know, conveniently and quickly does the voltage regulation between these two pieces and sends it off to the DAC. Um, the drawback to that is most of these come with a wall wart, which is a silly little thing you stick at the plug on the wall that is like a little block of, of, of plastic, it looks like. And that is really kind of the cheapest possible way to rectify AC. You'd much rather have a more extravagant uh, a power supply for a DAC because with digital gear, the power supply is paramount importance. It's extremely important. So 
that's when you see people buying linear power supplies, those outboard power supplies that sit outside that are linear and special and low noise and all that kind of stuff. People kind of go a little crazy with it, but you want to send a good quality DC power up to this thing. That will make a difference. So if you use a wall wart or you use a linear power supply, this thing's going to sound different. Okay, You want to use the linear power supply for something like this for sure because you want to feed it the best possible DC you can. So if we look at this from up here, we can see here's the USB input, okay, here are, here's the AES, and then here are some of the other, uh, a, this is AES as well, and then we've got two analog inputs, okay. So the analog inputs, uh, when they pop into here, they're going to either pass through, um, I'm not sure if it converts to digital, I can't remember, but nonetheless, your digital inputs are right here. Here is our digital input board and DSP board that we saw on the Rockna. Okay, it's a little smaller. You can see the XP, uh, the the um, FPGA. There's a clock. There's a clock. Here's a reset button. Um, you know some other logic chips and so forth on here. And this is the digital input section. Okay, this will reclock and do everything and send the little digital signal down to a pair of DACs, okay? These are stereo DACs, so what it's telling you, because you see two DACs next to each other, that means this is a differential input. This is a balanced um, uh, DAC. That is a great sign. When you see two DACs, one side by side, that means you've got mono DACs. So for a thousand bucks, this is a hell of a design. It uses two DACs. Here's the master clock generator right there. Um, more logic chips, op amps and stuff to drive the signal across the board. So we come out of these DACs and each one's a stereo DAC uh, or potentially a, 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 a quadruple DAC. Um, I, I, I would have to look at this. They're Burr Brown chips. So assuming they're dual, they're dual, they're uh, stereo DACs, we would, that would mean positive and negative signal going through the DAC and decoding uh, positive signal, negative signal for the right positive signal, negative signal for the left. So these little chips that you see, these rectangles, are the same as those big ass rectangles that we saw in the Rockna, except there's one per side. The Rockna is um, in, the, that has mono uh, a DAC, uh, if, if you see them, those big pieces. These are stereo DACs. So you can see how miniaturization really helps with um, in, in a chip situation. We come out of here, we go to the two op amps. This drives the signal across the board or to wherever it's going. Um, up here, this part of the um, circuit is the control circuit. We've got our buttons here to control things, our potentiometers and uh, trim pots to adjust. Um, and, and, and so this is the front, these things, our front panel control, pretty much all the way over here. Um, we have some filter caps here. Um, this is probably another voltage type regulator. These are latching devices. So this we wouldn't use in hi-fi. This is because there's so many different routing options that can happen between the inputs and the outputs on this DAC. You can monitor, you can, you can even plug your electric guitar into this thing and play your electric guitar with the music on the rig. It's pretty cool. So these latches are what helps route the signal uh, through this whole thing. Um, over here, we have the analog output section. So you can see, remember on the rock, now I showed you those little square things at the back. There was one on each. I said those are like a class A output amplifier. That's what each of these is. Each one of these replaces that discrete uh, PC board in the rock. Now. Um, so everything's done on, on uh, one of these chips. These are called uh, op amps. And these are like baby amplifiers, okay? These drive the lines here, and they drive this as a differential output. Um, and so it's balanced. This is a balanced piece um, from what I can tell. Uh, so it's a very high quality build with a very high integrity. Um, it's only a thousand bucks. It's called the Dangerous Music Source. Um, I'm not even sure if they still make it, but um, I wanted to use this as an example to show you guys uh, the difference and, and then we're going to go up and up the line and I'm going to show you a couple others So just to help you differentiate and kind of take things into consideration um, When we see DAX that are hundred and sixty five thousand dollars Then it boils down to sound. We want to see is the sound uh, 
worth 165 because we know the parts no matter what aren't anywhere close to that so we can just say it better sound so magic that i feel like i'm hallucinating when i listen to it somehow i think those real high-end spectacle audio i call them i think they're a farce and i don't I, i think it's more about look than it is about substance and um i set out to prove that now i'm setting out to prove that with uh the most expensive DAC in the world. And I'm starting at the bottom here with a $1,000 DAC made in USA. We went to the Rockna, which is a $16,000 DAC made in Romania. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple of the different things. This is a chip DAC. Okay, the Rockna was an R2R ladder. These replace the R2R ladders um, and are newer technology. And this is called a Sigma Delta or Delta Sigma um, uh, type DAC or a chip DAC. Uh, and so there we have it, folks. Just wanted to take a second to show you this and I will see you.